All right, so today I want to give you guys a rundown of um, the different camshafts from the J-Series. Uh, first gen cams versus the second gen cams. Um, just basically a few little differences. Um, nothing major. Not a, I'm not going to give you specs today on the lift and duration of this cam versus this cam. But I'm just going to show you a little bit of the basics. Um, overall length of the camshaft. Um, how to install the newer cams into the older engine. And um, just a couple ways to easily identify the first gen engines versus the second gen engines. Uh, with that, let's just dive right in. I'll keep this video nice and short. And um, hopefully you learn something. Okay, so I'm here next to the camshafts. Um, this is from the first generation engines. Uh, this particular camshaft comes out of a J32A2. Or like a 2003 Acura TL Type S engine, for example. This is a J35A8 camshaft. This comes out of a 2005 Acura RL. Um, so I wanted to just go down a little bit of the differences between these cams. And um, I guess some of the reasons that they're different. And um, also let you understand the difference between the first generation engine and a second generation engine. Uh, of the J-Series, that is. So one simple way to... to figure out because a lot of people are confused which engine is which which one can they swap in their car which one they cannot swap in their car so the first thing that's very the most simple way to understand if you're dealing with a first generation engine you're going to have a typical style three port exhaust manifold so this is going to be your flange and you'll have a normal header as people um no the start in pretty much 2004 almost all the j series from that point except for like the Honda Pilot, the 335A4, have this manifold where the actual exhaust manifold is casted into the head and you just have one pipe coming off of the cylinder head. Um, a lot of people call them the pre-cats. You know, that's not about it. The next major difference between the two engines is the time and belt size. The newer engines, the ones that have, every, every J-Series that has this flange on it, has a thin time and belt. Um, any J series that has this flange has a thicker time and belt. So I have two time belts here. These are both uh, brand new on the time and belt. This is from the second generation engine. This is from the first generation engine. I put them next to each other. You can see this one's very. This one's um, it's not thin, but I guess you call it narrow. This is a narrow belt versus a thick belt. So um, you know it's a few millimeters thinner. Okay, so outside of the time and belt um, differences, the cam because of the di uh, difference in the thickness of the time and belt, the camshafts are actually different as well too. So if I was to put these two camshafts next to each other, you'll see that this camshaft is slightly shorter. So let me stand them up here. You'll see if I try to put this on, this camshaft is loose under here. Pretty much this camshaft is shorter. Pretty much for Honda using the narrow timing belt. So a lot of people are actually trying to swap the newer camshafts into the older engines. And if you go to do that, you're going to have the issue where your cam gear doesn't stick out far enough. So we offer a camshaft spacer, which pretty much spaces out the cam gear a little further so that you can line up the timing belt properly. So, um, I get a lot of questions on exactly how do you install the, the camshaft spacer. So I just wanted to give a quick example. So on a J series, obviously the, or any engine in general, you have a keyway, which is going to hold the cam gear on a J series. The actual keyway is built into the actual, um, cam gear itself. So you'll put it on like so, and you'll have the, and you know, it keeps it locked in place. However, we just put this on here on, and we try to install this into a first gen engine. We're going to obviously run into issues with the time belt. So you make this spacer, which pretty much slides onto the base of the camshaft, which will add enough length to the cam so that we can, when we line this up on here, or better yet, before I do that, 
if I put these next to each other, now I gotta do it for you to see, we'll be at the proper spacing for the cam gear. So the next step we'll do is we're gonna take the cam gear, just put that in place. And as you see now, the cam gear doesn't go all the way down. There's a little space here and the keyway is in the cam, but not fully. And then that's where you come in with the next part of our spacer kit. And this has a keyway cut into it as well. So this is the second keyway that's gonna go down, face down. A little snug, it's brand new. Just like that. So the camshaft is already locked in place because the cam, the cam gear, sorry, is already locked in place because the cam gear has the keyway built into it. The top piece here had a keyway cut out. So, and then we also include a new bolt. So put that in. I'm not gonna screw it all the way down. Just a little bit, I guess. Make this simple. So on the back side, we have the spacer, which brings the cam gear out to the proper position where we want it to be. And on this side, we have, we put the other piece. And then that will allow you to put the newer J-Series cams into the older J-Series engines. All right, so that was just a pretty much a little basic rundown of the second gen cams versus the first gen cams um basic information but i hope you guys learned a little something today from it and understand the differences between the two cams how to install our cam spaces if you need if you do decide to go the route and install the newer cams and also a couple simple differences of the first gen versus second gen and how to easily identif identify which motor is which and with that um i guess i'll wrap this video up and um if you got any questions just ask and um i'll try to cover it in the next video and try to see if i can give you some guys some more details coming up here soon thanks again for watching